Dear brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Thank God. It's time to read Bible. Let's continue to read Genesis chapter forty-four. We will start from verse sixteen today. Then Judah said, "What shall we say to my law? What shall we speak? Or how shall we clear ourselves? God has found out the iniquity of your servants. Here we are, my law's slaves." Both we and he also with who the cup was found, when the silver cup was found in Benjamin's sacks, Judah didn't try to defend themselves. Instead, he told Joseph that they all sinned and they were willing to stay to be Joseph's slaves. We knew that Joseph planned the whole thing. Joseph's goal was to restore the beautiful re-、uh, fellowship between the brothers. Before they could restore the fellowship. He would like to know whether his brothers truly repent, to confirm whether they truly repent. The last test was to see how they would deal with it when their younger brothers suffer. This is what Joseph would like to know. So, verse seventeen, Joseph said, "But he said, 'Far be it from me that I should do so. But the man in whose hand the cup was found, he should be my slave.'" And as for you, go up in peace to your father. It appears that Joseph gave Judah a tough problem here. He told Judah that only Benjamin should stay; the rest could go back. Joseph seemed to be telling Judah, "There are many people in your hometown waiting for you to bring the grain back. Benjamin was the one that was caught with the cup, so let him stay to become my slave." The rest of you can go back with the grain, so that your families would not starve. This is similar to the first time when they came to buy food. They went back, but Simeon was left there. Only difference is it was Benjamin this time. If you were Judah, would you accept? Many times when we are ca- evaluating something, if it's based on calculation of gain and loss, it is possible that we would accept. Here, only one person needed to stay. The other side was the need for a family of sixty to seventy people. The person who makes decision this way might be a good staff. He could calculate pros and cons, gain and loss clearly, but he is not a good king. The one who can be the king will take responsibility. This is a very important characteristic. If something happens. I will take the responsibility. Let's continue to look at how Judah deal with this. Chapter forty-four, from verse eighteen to thirty-four, recorded Judah's speech. It is rare that Bible devoted this length of the passage to record someone's speech. Judah's pleading to Joseph appeared to be very sincere and responsible. It is a good example for each one of us who is willing to learn to serve in the church. Verse eighteen. Then Judah came near to him and said, "O、oh、my lord, please let our servant speak a word in my lord's hearing." He humbled himself. He he called Joseph my lord and himself servant, and he pleaded with Joseph, "Do not let your anger burn against your servant, for you are even like Pharaoh." Pharaoh was the most powerful king in the world at that time. Judah said that he saw Joseph as if he saw Pharaoh. He was so majestic and powerful, while he himself was a humble servant. So he begged Joseph not to let his own anger burn against them. We can imagine that Joseph played the role of a stern Egyptian officer in the whole event. His face was serious, and his words were harsh. Under this situation, it was difficult to succeed in the negotiation. Judah was clear about his position. Benjamin was caught red-handed. What he could do was to humble himself, so the anger of these Egyptian officers could be calmed down. At the same time, he was very meek in his speech. Dear brothers and sisters, we might face the same situation in our life. Whether others accuse us, regardless when others accuse us, regardless whether it's right or wrong, quickly it could provoke our reaction. So it 
could then turn into an argument, and then the argument arise to lawsuit at the court, or resolution by force. When we face this situation, the best solution is to humble ourselves with meek attitude to reach a consensus with the counterpart. Proverbs chapter fifteen verse one says, "A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger." Paul also tells us in Colossians chapter four verse six, "That your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may not." You may know how you ought to answer each each one. Salt is a seasoning. Let the speech be grace, be with grace, just as adding salt in the food, so the food will be tasted. Let your speech become harmonious. In this situation, how could Judah season his speech with salt? Quickly, he must try to recall the occasions that he had conversation with this Egyptian officer. He asked about their father every time. This is the first handful of salt. He also thought about the feast at the house of the Egyptian officer yesterday. Benjamin got five times as much as their food. This is the second handful of salt. Judah captured this Egypt. Egyptian officers care for their father and the youngest brother. This was his cutting point. From verse nineteen to twenty-three, Judah repeated Joseph's request for them in the past conversation with them. In a humble tone, he clearly told Joseph, "This request came from you. This request caused us big trouble." Verse nineteen, my lord asked his servants, saying. Have you a father or a brother? He called Joseph, my lord, and himself servant. In the whole process, in the society at that time, master can do anything to the servant, because servants were property of the master. By us, by using these titles, Judah had put the right to make decision in Joseph's hands. He was willing to appear to his emotion and reason with the facts. Hoping to convince his this Egyptian officer, he brought up, "You ask us first whether we had father or brother." Verse twenty, and we said to my law, "We have a father, an old man. Our father still live, but he is old, and a child of his old age, who is young. This child is Benjamin. Father had Benjamin when he was old, because he had a son when he was old." The son was precious to him. This child was born when father was old. Not only so, his brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother's children. This younger brother was poor. His brother Joseph is dead. His mother, we all know that when Benjamin was born, Rachel was taken by the law, so his mother was also dead. And last, his father loved him. Judah presented in front of Joseph a picture of an old man and his young youngest son, who depend on each other in their lives with simply a couple of the sentences. Of course, Joseph knew that, but when Judah described them, we can imagine that Joseph must have tried to hold back his tears. Joseph was an emotional person. A couple of times, when he couldn't control his emotion. He quickly left them and went to a place that they couldn't see him to weep. Judah's re- description must have touched the deep part of Joseph's heart. Continue to verse twenty-one. Then you said to your servant, "Bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes on him." At the beginning, Joseph charged them and said that they were spy. So they told him that they had a younger brother. Joseph insisted that. They bring their younger brother down to him. Judah tried to restore what happened to at the time. He didn't mention Joseph's charge against them. He stayed at the emotional level, trying to appear to Joseph's emotion. Verse twenty-two. And we said to my law, the lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. But you said to your servants, unless your younger. Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you shall see my face no more. 
in Judah's saddle description, it shows that the request from Joseph at the time was very tough for them, because the life of their fa- youngest brother and the life of their father were tied together. Their father could not leave this youngest brother, but Joseph insisted that unless they brought their youngest brother down, they should see his face no more. Let's focus on Judah first. We can see that Judah had Joseph. You, we can see that Judah had changed. He became very gentle now. In chapter thirty-seven, in the event that they pers- persecuted Joseph, when Joseph came before his brothers with his tunic of many colors, they stripped him of his tunic and cast him into the pit. Joseph pleaded with them at the time. Chapter thirty-seven, verse twenty-five reads, "And they sat down to eat a meal. Of course, of course, Judah was one of them. We can imagine the scene. Poor Joseph was cast into the pit. He was crying, but his brothers sat down. While they listened to him crying, they still had the mood to eat a meal. It tells that Judah was." Hard-hearted, he came up with the idea to sell Joseph to the Ishmaelite. As a result, Joseph was brought to Egypt. Judah's intention was not to shed Joseph's blood, but it caused Joseph to leave his hometown and became a slave for thirteen years in Egypt. It was all because of Judah's idea. And in chapter in chapter thirty-eight, in the incident of Judah and his daughter-in-law. At first, Judah found out that his daughter-in-law was conceived. He didn't know that the child was his, so he also had a very strong reaction. Chapter thirty-eight, verse twenty-four. Judah said, "Bring her out, and that he be be found, and that him be burned." He was a stern person, but after so many years, so he stood in front of Joseph. He was so humble and meek. He had changed. He became a meek person. Matthew five, Matthew chapter five, verse five says, "Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth." In the word, worldly view, you should try to fight for what you want. If you want to inherit the earth, you have to fight. You should defeat others. You should become a winner so you can get what you want. This is the worldly principle. But in the world, all that you have gained will decay eventually. It is totally opposite in the heaven. The meek can inherit the earth. The meek will inherit the property that would never decay. The church today is the foretaste of the heaven in the future. In the church, we should learn to be meek when we get along with other brothers and sisters. May God help us. Let's pray together, Lord. We appreciate the change on Judah. We hope that we can form the character of a king in our church life. Help me to be meek, not in my natural character, but as Judah, to be changed by you. May the godly life in me form some beautiful character on me. Bless my life. Pray in Jesus' name.